Okay, we got some more tweezers. Uh, people like the pointy ESD tweezers. Well, these are the kind of uh, uh, snub-nosed, flat-billed uh, tweezers. You can see they're not as pointy. Um, they have kind of a rounded tip, so they're going to be a little bit better for larger components because the components won't twist in the um, pointy tips of the other tweezers. Uh, they are ESD, and you can they're plastic, so not good for hot air or for um, you know, if you're soldering, you don't want to, you don't want to have your soldering iron next to the tip, but for placement, they're nice and comfy and nice and soft. Or if you're doing, uh, work with, um, you want to pull tape off of something, or you want to work with a softer, um, material, uh, these will not mar the way metal ones do. Alrighty. Next up. Next up, we have a through way, um, RJ 11 slash RJ 12, uh, connector so this shows the version that is you know with the extension cord but it's the same idea you just have to drill a hole i think it's about like an inch and a half in diameter and what i like about these is that there's this nut that gets removed and so you can have like you know material up to like an inch thick half an inch is, is a good good amount but i think it's like three quarters of an inch thick um and there's a big lip and so it covers any like rough edges of the hole so if you're even if you're not laser cutting if you use like a hole saw or like a you know an auger bit um you'll hide any of the you know little rough edges because the lip goes over and gives you a nice uh bezel look this is you know sometimes called telephony connectors but they're used for other stuff um four or six connectors this is not rj45 compatible but I, you know i see people use telephony wire all the time it's very inexpensive and very thin usually so if you're just carrying up to six uh pins of power and data um, you can definitely reuse telephone wire or of course if you're building something that has telephony uh, rj11 and rj12 are used there a lot too all right next up next up we have a breakout this was actually a chip that was on i on npi this is the s35710 uh, and now that the chip shortage is over we can get back to this so this is an interesting chip it's a low power wake up timer and you connect it to it over i squared c and actually made a typo. It's not 16 bit, it's 24 bit. I'm gonna have to fix it on the revision. It's a 24 bit timer. You write a 24 bit value to the internal register and then the chip will count up slowly one second at a time until the internal timer matches the set amount timer. And then the alert pin, which um, is labeled out, will toggle. It will go from high to low or low to high, depending on whether you have invert or normal switch selected. See, there's at the top, there's a switch. So you can have either the out pin go low when the timer matches or go high when the timer matches. So it's basically like, you know, it's kind of a little bit like a real time clock, but it's meant for, you know, a very long amount of time. And it's very, very low power and very simple. It doesn't do anything else. So it has a little bit less expense than some real time clocks. Um, also doesn't have a battery backup. Uh, but it uses like 0.1 microamperes of current. This would be something where if you wanted uh, like a watchdog timer um, or an alert that would tell you that you want to go to sleep, but you didn't know when you were going to wake up sort of thing. And this could toggle an interrupt pin for you, or it would turn on and off some external um, circuitry. This would be good for that. I'll tell you what it isn't good for, which I learned from experimentation is you can't use it you can't connect the output pin to your the microcontroller that is controlling its reset or enable line because when you first power it on, it will be off by default. It will be like whatever is the depowered state. And so it's not good for like self low powering, which is a little bit of a bummer. I wish it was, but I still think it has some use cases for people who want ultra low timing. It can go from one second up to 194 days because again, it has that 24 bit timer. Um, so I think interesting and possibly useful for, uh, real time counting watchdog wake up timing projects. And again, it's got that 0.2 microamperes of, uh, current draw. So it's very, very low power and, uh, you can have it run in the background and then control some other circuitry to, um, make your whole project much lower power over long periods of time. All right. And the story of the tonight besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, and everyone who makes open source go is... Okay, we've got a new Cutie Pie, uh, and this one is a real throwback. This uses an 8051 core. It's the CH552 from WCH. It's an 8051 core, but it's running pretty fast. It's 16 megahertz at uh, 
uh, sorry, it's yeah, 16 megahertz, 3.3 volts, turn to over the amount of flash. I think it's 16K of flash and like two, one or 2K of RAM. But what's interesting about this chip is despite being an 8-bit 8051, it has full USB device support. So it can act as a USB serial device or keyboard or a mouse. Um, it's very, very low cost. And so if you're wanting to experiment with the CH552 line, you know, this is a nice board that has everything you need to get started. There's a reset button and, a, and there's also a ROM bootloader. So when you hold the D plus line high during boot, it will then launch into a USB bootloader that you can um, use to load code on. Uh, I also put a NeoPixel on. There's a 3.3 volt regulator because I want to make sure you had plenty of current and a SemiQT port. It's single sided, so it's great for uh, you know, if you want uh, to solder this directly onto a PCB, there's four analog input pins, uh, I squared C and SPI and hardware UART. Um, I think the the SPI is, I believe, hardware. The I squared C, I think, is uh, software I squared C, although it says in the data sheet that they are proper I squared C. Anyways, but it definitely does have like 8 bit analog inputs, definitely has SPI, definitely has hardware UART. One thing to note is that there weren't, there's not a lot of pins on this chip. And so the MOSI pin and the A2 pin are the same because it's a hardware MOSI pin and it's also a hardware analog pin. And there was, you know, you can't have both. Uh, you can't separate the two. They're all in one pin. So that pin uh, is shared. But other than that, it's, um, you know, if you want to experiment or play with 8051 or this chip because you want to use like a 40 cent microcontroller in your project, um, this will make it really fast to get going. Uh, we recommend using the CH55X Duino board support package, which, as you expect, allows you to program this board via the Arduino IDE. However, I have to warn people, it's not Arduino compatible because the compiler is C, not C++, which means that there's no Arduino libraries that are going to work because they all use C++. So instead, we have some example code where you can, like, to, you know, run the NeoPixel or run like a strand of NeoPixels or read from I squared C, but you don't get to take advantage of like the wire library or serial dot. Like there's no dot or arrow because there's no objects in the C compiler. But again, if you're wanting to hack, experiment, explore, this isn't for beginners, it's a little bit more for advanced people. It's kind of fun. I thought it's a little bit weird, uh, a little bit of a twist. If you want to get started with something beginner-y, check out our Cutie Pie or our SAMD21, um, our, our, our B2040 or SAMD21 or ESP32S3 Cutie Pie. Those are a great choice. This is, uh, oops. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is for hackers who want to hack. But for those who want, it's there. And it's like under five bucks. Good deal. Oh, ready. That's new product. <laughs> <laughs> See my <laughs>